three weeks since my last confession, and I accused myself of missing Mass on Sundays through my own fault, taking God's holy name in vain, being disobedient, being proud, coveting my neighbor's goods. That is all I can remember, Father. Is there anything else you wish to confess, my son? The gaze of the young men in the early films, and that voice appears somehow in your new film, Time in the City. Probably the most angry moment in the piece is when you talk about the parks of Liverpool and how men, just for a wink and a nod, thrown in jail when far worse crimes were happening in the rest of the city. And then you remember that young boy who very explicitly in the, in the trilogy gazes at his male relatives and other boys in the street with a sexual longing that he doesn't quite know how to express. Talk to me about that evolution. Well, it was a very painful one uh, because uh, when, after my father died and we began to live because he was very violent. Um, the, from, I was still at primary school, and a primary school in England, you were there from five to eleven. So from seven to eleven, those four years were absolute ecstasy. I was ecstatically happy. I can't tell you, I was literally ill with happiness. And uh, I left primary school in um, the May or June, and that summer was a, a warm one, it was warm. And I didn't go to the pictures this particular uh, day. And um, I was looking out of the back of the house. And these bricklayers were um, building a wall with just their jeans on. And I suddenly knew that I shouldn't look at someone like that. And my, my happiness, my childhood was over like that. In an instant, it was gone. And I really believed I was a devout Catholic. And then I went up to uh, secondary school. And like all those like children are feral, they, they smell difference. And these four lads saw their victim and they beat me up for every day for four years. You know, and I didn't tell a soul. Um, and it beats any kind of self-esteem out of you. You feel utterly despised. When your psyche is forged through that, knowing that you're despised on a daily basis, and that you know you, your feeling, whatever this feeling is, I didn't know what it was, was wrong. I then became even more devout. I literally did pray to my knees blood, and no sucker came. He never, God never, ever, ever responded. Um, it was probably out at Gap Kids, knowing my luck. Um, and then at 22, I realized it was all a lie. I just thought, it's just men in frocks. And I left. But of course, what you do when you've, for 17 years, you've believed. Um, and I, I poured all my life in my work. And I'm trying to learn, because I didn't go to university. I wanted to learn it uh, as much as I could. Um, and I read the whole of Dickens in a year. I read the whole of the Brontes in a year. Um, I just read all the time. Um, but it doesn't replace that feeling of happiness. I've never been as happy since. And it doesn't replace that feeling of, of utter self-loathing um, that, that is there within me. I, quite honestly, I don't like being me. I'd rather be somebody else. Um, but preferably, very good looking, very good body, and really stupid. Because then the world is your lobster. And heterosexual too? Or oh, absolutely. Do you not care about that? Absolutely. Or perhaps bisexual. <laughs> so you can have all the choices. Yes, well, someone said to me, what's the, what's the definition of a bisexual? He said, someone who doesn't know which way to turn. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.